now we are going to learn how to change this slideshow here at the top. And this applies to any slideshow, not necessarily just this theme, because everybody's using these Nivio sliders and just a few common sliders you find on all pages. Now, the main problem I find in people that are making these is they just don't have good aesthetics as to the dimensions that you need to use. So let's go into the back end and see how this one in particular is going to be set up. And again, like I said, it doesn't matter really uh, what theme you're using or what slider you're using. These basic concepts are going to work on all of your websites. So we go into our dashboard, which I already have open over here. And in this theme in particular, it has the traject folder, which is the name of the theme. And I scroll down till I find slideshow. Yours might be set up differently, but it's almost always the same as far as the layout. And now I'm going to look at the style. Yeah, Nivo is a very popular one, and I'm using their default. I'm not sure really what this person is using for it. You can always go into the source code and look at the back end here to see how that slider is set up. Uh, but honestly, I don't care. So we go over to the slideshow and we go down here and the cool thing about this one, I already have a few slides put in for you and I just don't like how they look. This is an affiliate page and that's actually the sliders for my main page. So we need to customize these and it's really great to have incredible stock photography. I personally have my own stock photography library, so that really helps. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up and I want to go into the stock photography library and look for a few things. Now I really recommend that you have Photoshop or uh, GIMP Shop, GIMP, any really high-end photo editing software, and you also have some nice stock photography. So I'm going to go in and look at the new material, and since I am uh, the owner of this, I have a lot more material than most people have on it, but there are some great open source stock photography out there. You can type in uh, royalty-free, if I can type royalty-free stock photos and there's two different types of stock photos there's places like iStock or even my company open vase that we actually sell these stock photos to designers like you um, and it's actually pretty cheap look how nice that looks it really makes a big difference my photos are just really high-end and you want to have photos like that but you can also just find a few free ones you can go to Flickr for example flickr.com and you can also look for photos over there now I know you're interested in learning how to put this slider together but if you don't have nice photos I don't really want to see your slider out there I see so many web designers they have nice themes and horrible photos in them so do all of us a favor and come here and find some nice photos you can somehow find community creative commons stuff right here on Flickr let's look for it there's a tool called Creative Commons 3.0. And Creative Commons 3.0 means that you're allowed to share it and use it commercially even as long as you give the person credit. So somewhere in your credit of your website, you'll have to give these people credit for their photo. And then I'm going to type in Flickr because I don't know their exact link for their Creative Commons. Here we go, free pictures. Now look at that, that's really nice stuff. And you'll definitely find, I mean, they have thousands on here that are free. And this is just one of the many places you can go to to find Creative Commons stuff. And you want to make sure that you have the right type of Creative Commons. There's many different types. And there's some people that they'll allow you to share their photo as long as your website is also free. So if you have a commercial product, you want to make sure it's only the 3.0 Creative Commons. Okay, so going back, let's assume that you do have some nice photos that you want to put on put in on there. I'm going to search for mine pretty quickly. This is a business portion of my site, so I'm going to search for a few business photos. And I also have a business fitness site, therefore I don't want just normal stock. Like if you look at some of these pictures, uh, he just doesn't look like he works out very much, so I don't want to put him on here. And these people, yeah, they don't work out so much either. They're more corporate. Mm, maybe something like that. That might work. So since I own this already, I'm going to go ahead and download a full high-end resolution copy. At the same time that's downloading, 
I'm going to open up my Photoshop and this works in any type of photo editing program. And now I'm going to go back over here and I'm pretty lazy in how I do things. I do hundreds of photos, hundreds of websites, and I just like it to be as quick as possible. So what I personally do is I take a screenshot of this. I'm just going to hit the print screen button on my keyboard. I'm going to go over into Photoshop and I'm going to hit control N to open up a new one. And then it automatically opens up this. Now my width and height should be 1920 by 1080. I don't know why it says this and so maybe I copied it wrong. So I'm going to go back over here, hit my print screen button again, go back, control N. There we go. 1920 by 1080. Sometimes that print screen button just doesn't do what you want it to. Then I press control V and I paste that in there. Now this just shows my screenshot exactly what we were looking at before. I'm going to maximize that and I'm going to zoom in just on this slider here and I want to get the exact dimensions that it is. Now hopefully you have better documentation that you can use. I have to put this on normal. Hopefully you have better documentation you can use to figure out what size your slider is going to be but if you're just two or three pixels off it's not that big of a deal. Okay and, and then it's going to tell me how big this is. I'm going to highlight all of that, choose image, crop, and there we go. That's the size this photo is going to be. I can go to image, image size, and I can see it's 974 by 385, and if you go into the theme, sometimes it'll tell you right there, 974 by 385, recommended image size. The person that designed this theme is smart. They knew that you want to know the image size, so they gave it to you right there, but use my print screen method if they did not. Okay, so it's 974 by 385. We have our new photo downloaded, and you can press Control J on Firefox or uh, Chrome, and it'll bring up your downloads for you. And then I'm going to open up this. I'm opening up this picture, and I'm going to right click on it and tell us to open it with Photoshop. Okay, there we go. Now, since we're on the web, we don't have to worry about quality so much. This picture is enormous. It's made for very high-end publications. So I'm going to press Control-0. If I can find my zero button. Well, maybe not. I'm going to just go down here and type in 100. And there you go. You see how big this photo is. It's just enormous. So I'm going to zoom back out. And two things, you could either take this and copy it and go back over on your other layer and paste it in there. And now you see it's just huge. You, you can drag it around, see what you might want. That might be a cool image to put on the front page. Or you can drag it and resize it. Always hold down shift while you drag to maintain your aspect ratio of your photos. And that might take me a while, so I'm going to zoom way out here. Hey, look how look how big this photo is compared to how big we need. So I'm going to resize it down pretty small and then take it over there. Now I can zoom back in. And you never know, sometimes the photos work because we obviously have to resize it, but sometimes they don't. Like that won't work because we have people's heads on the bottom. So I'm going to have to resize this even smaller. But now this won't work because now we have a lot of extra space over there on the other side. And that's why it's so important to get the right photo and the right dimensions for everything. I'd rather you spend a lot of time on this part than the actual programming side. Get really nice photos that actually send a strong message. So I think this is going to be pretty good. Then over on this side, I'm actually going to have a little bit of text talking to them. It has all the people in it. I'm just going to go ahead and hit the check mark. Now, if you know Photoshop, then this part's going to be easy for you. If you don't, um, hang on for the ride. I'm, I can actually just cut this out here. You guys might get lucky on this photo. Yeah, I can cut that out. I'm going to hide this other layer. And look at that. That's, that's actually blending pretty well. But I think I'm going to still have to do it. I see this area here. Let me zoom in on that so you can see it as well. It just cuts off the image. And... For this one in particular, I think I'm just going to do the paintbrush and get a white palette. 
take my opacity down. It's already on 65 and 40 something. And then I'm going to just kind of whiten that out there. I want to make it look like it slowly blends over and turns white instead of just cutting off so quickly. Okay, then I'm going to take the opacity down even lower and do that again even closer. So that's my my cheap way of blending something. You can also do masks and gradients, but that didn't take me that long. Cool, so I just know with this theme in particular, when I go back in there to look at it, this part here, it's just nice to have a photo and then a little bit of an information for them to know. When they click on it, what are they going to get? So I'm going to talk about the fact that we have kind of like a multi-level marketing in our system. I'm going to use these people talking about, you know, they all work together as a team. And you want to maintain the same fonts. Try to only have two or three fonts on your whole website. And then I'm going to click over here. It's still going to be white, so change that over to something else. And very simple stuff. Just the word teamwork. That alone is going to tell them what this area does. I underline my title and then underneath of it. For now it's even okay. If you're the designer and you aren't the owner of the company, you might just put lorem ipsum in here. So let's open up a lorem ipsum generator. Yeah, I've designed for years and I don't have custom lorem ipsum. I just type it into Google and get it from there. And we don't need a lot, we might need. Uh, it's not Lorem Ipsum yet. Well, that might be enough for me. I'll duplicate it twice if I need to. Okay, so you can actually take your text tool here in Photoshop and you can map out the size that you want it to take up. And then when you paste in, it puts it all in there. Now that obviously doesn't look good. So remember, you're a designer. Your main job is just to make this look aesthetically pleasing. So decide if you want things all caps, if you want bolded, and spend a lot of time on just the aesthetics of everything. There we go, that's starting to look pretty good. And also try to keep the same color schemes. I like this as well. I'm going to duplicate this text twice. So I'm going to copy all of that and paste it again right below it. Okay, but I don't like it under underlined. I don't like it centered either. I'm going to put it over on the left. And maybe a little more spacing in between each. And we're getting close. So I also like to keep my colors consistent. I don't like pure blacks and I don't like pure whites. I like to take the color palette here of the font and take a color that you already find inside of there. And look at that, that's in the blue palette because you would never guess that looking at it. You would just choose black. Look at that, they get a little bit of reds in there. So doing that, it's really nice to keep our eyes all having the same color throughout. And you know, I might just keep this centered. Not sure yet. I think that last word's throwing me off. It just it looks weird all by itself. Maybe I'll add something else in there. Sure, maybe that works. Okay, so let's assume you're done. And again, it's more about getting great colors, great themes, and uh, just blending everything as fast as you possibly can because this is one out of 10 slides you need to have, and those slides are only on one page out of 10 pages you need. So that's 100 different elements you need, and you need to move quickly. Design is about efficiency. So now we go to File, Save for Web. You don't need this high quality. This very high quality is not necessary. It's 70 kilobytes. That's not that bad. And the cool thing about Photoshop, you can be changing this quality here and seeing if it affects anything up here. And that still looks like good quality to me. I'm on a 920, I'm on a HD 1920 by 1080 monitor, which is better than what most people have. So 
this still looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and save it and see I was able to drop my resolution down quite a bit. I saved that. For now, I'm just going to throw it on my desktop. And I'm going to call it Teamwork. Since I make so many photos, I really don't save my PSD files. I'll just save it really quick. Then I go back into my website, upload it, and I can really make that within 10 seconds. If I wasn't doing a tutorial, that would take me literally maybe a half a minute or so. Um, so it's actually easier for me to recreate it completely than it is to uh, find my file and do all of that. So now let's go back into the slideshow. And a lot of times it'll actually let you upload it right here. But this isn't letting me do that. Since I have so many websites, I don't like to FTP upload this stuff. I like to go and use the actual media library. So now let's log into your media library. And choose add new. And then you can either drag and drop something here or you can select the file. I'm going to choose select, go to my desktop, and I'm going to look for that teamwork. There we go. I also have so much stuff on my desktop. A cool little trick, you can just type in the word that you're looking for here. It finds it for you. We choose open, it uploads it, and now you want to grab that address right there, the file URL, and save changes. Okay, we go back to the slideshow and down here in our very first one we're gonna paste in all of that now also how this works if you look on here you see this incredible profiles you see six weeks of skinny all this text this is actually a photo and over top of it they put the text on top so I didn't have to make my text over in Photoshop like this I could have taken the photo and right aligned it. Let's turn that text off. I could do something like this and this particular theme will automatically put stuff up over here. But see how you have that really harsh line there? I just thought it would look better if I have it on that side. Another cool thing you can do if that is a problem, uh, you can go into your image and you can do a little rotation and flip the canvas. And now we have that harsh border on the right side but it looks like it's appropriate. Cool. And then I can actually have HTML style text on top of that. And let's go ahead and scroll through back to one of those. Uh, but it looks like that text isn't editable anyway. It looks like it's turning it into part of the photo. So I don't mind just storing it in, in Photoshop. But just showing you some of the cool things you can do with it. So that's what this image title and image description text would be. And you see some of them, I just have it turned off completely. Since I put the since I put the font and text all inside, I don't need any of that here. And then I choose the page that I would want to go to. So I might have a page and it might be called teamwork, for example. Find a job. Um, and that's about it. So let's save our changes, see what it looks like. And honestly, you might do this 10 times before it actually looks good on your page. But I actually like that. I also have this bar at the top here uh, that might get in the way of your picture. So when you're looking through all of these and you're designing your page, make sure you don't put anything right up there. Again, that's just for this page, but just be aware of that kind of stuff and don't spend too much time on your photo making everything perfect before you upload it because you might have forgotten completely about that logo at the top. So that's it pretty much. We go back in the slideshow. You can make five more of these. You can drag them around. Maybe I want that one to be the third one that pops up. Drag it down to the third. Save changes. Refresh over here. And there we go, number three. That's it, guys. Hope you guys enjoy this slide tutorial.